Okay, welcome to video seven. Uh, we're finished with first order ODEs and moving into second order um, DEs. And before I get started on this intro, I wanted to make a little public service announcement here. And I know that uh, taking these online assessments um, is hard because um, you have everything in the world in front of you, especially, especially things like Google and Simbo Lab, I think it's spelled like this, etc. And I can only imagine when you're there and you're stuck and you don't know what to do that you turn to the net because we do that for everything. I'm just as guilty as the next person. But uh, that's called cheating. And it's not something I, I hate dealing with cheating. And the only reason I do it is because if someone gets it perfect, because they've used the net and someone else was being honest, got it completely wrong because they just try to do the work themselves and they lose points. That's not fair to them. So do your best to fight the urge to go to uh, the net to help you with these problems because I have really clear vision on things like that. So here's, here's an example. Okay. This appeared in problem two, assessment two, problem two. A couple people wound up at this point because they sh tried to show that it's exact. And then they wrote this down, they wrote this down, and then they put an, an imp implication sign, and then they wrote this. At least three people did that. Now the amount of work it takes to get from here to here, at a minimum, is three steps. Okay, so that does not imply that. And multiple people admitted to just using an equation solver. So uh, there will be a time for that in the course later. But for now, uh, this is supposed to be your own work done um, by you. Okay, so no more PSAs. Just don't do it. I'm going to catch you every time, and I don't like to deal with it. So, all right, moving on. Chapter 3. Chapter three is going to seem ridiculously easy after the um, the difficulties of one. All right, and we're working with second order ODE, so let's start with a good old definition here. Okay. A second order ODE has the just basic wide form second derivative of y is a function of t, y, and dy, dt, okay? Or if you're using the other, the other notation, y double prime is a function of t, y, and y prime, okay? This is, this is linear. Okay, the second order ODE is linear if, if it has the form um, so the f of t y dy dt has to be linear. So we have a function of t um, and here's my dy dt. And here's my y, okay. So f, this f, the right-hand side of the equation, has to be linear in t, y, and y prime. Okay, this is not a very fun form to work with, this equation one, I'm gonna call it, okay. It's the basic form. You can also write it like this. Um, y double prime plus p sub t y prime plus q sub t y equals g sub t. And this looks very familiar to us. I should have my equation numbering on the side here, not on this side. And we restrict ourselves to intervals where p, q, and g are continuous. All right. 
So if, if equation one cannot be written in the form of equation two, then the differential equation is nonlinear. We barely talk about nonlinear in this chapter and for most of the course. Uh, I think the most amount of nonlinear we've done already in the course. So, all right. And if you want to write one of these DEs as an initial value problem, you now have to have two initial conditions. And you'll see why in a little bit here. The first one is going to be something like y of t naught equals y naught. And the second initial condition is going to be the derivative. Okay. And when you have these initial conditions, you can um, find a particular solution. So an IVP has two initial conditions. Okay. So. More definition. Equation two is said to be homogeneous if the g function is zero. Okay. Now this isn't homogeneous. This is homogeneous. Milk is homogeneous. ODEs are homogeneous. All right. Uh, if g sub t is non-zero, the DE is non-homogeneous. Okay, we always start with homogeneous equations because when we solve non-homogeneous equations, the first step is to solve the homogeneous, homogeneous one first and then do something else for the second half. So, all right. So we're going we're going to um, rewrite equation two again. In the form, what do we use here? P, Q, and R. So we have capital P sub T y double prime plus capital Q sub t y prime plus r of t y equals cap g of t. Okay. Um, so now assume g sub t is zero. So it's homogeneous. For this chapter, we're going to assume that these that these functions, p sub t, q sub t, and r sub t are all elements of the real numbers. They're constants. Okay. And there will be one point where we allow non-constant polynomials to land in front of the y and y prime and y double prime. But for the bulk of this, we're going to assume that PQ and R are just constants. And like most things, you build up from that. Okay, so here is here's here's an example. Here's here's an example. Let's get some get some math in there. Here's an ODE, y double prime minus y equals zero. And we'll make it an IVP, y of zero equals two, and y prime of zero equals minus one, okay? So matching this, matching this uh, equation up here, p sub t is one, Q sub t is zero, 
r sub t is 1 and g sub t is 0. Okay. All right, so let's just muck around with this, uh, this ODE. So the, so the ODE says what? It says that y double prime equals y. Okay. Let's just guess. Um, some solutions would be 0, right? That's a solution. It's pretty boring. It's called the trivial solution. 0 is its own derivative, and so um, when you subtract the two, they're equal. Doesn't doesn't satisfy the initial condition, so that won't work. Um, so let's think about functions. What function is its own derivative? Its own second derivative, I mean. Well, here's one. Right? Right? Because its first derivative is e to the t, and its second derivative is e to the t. So it satisfies the ODE, right? That's a solution. Let's see here. What about. What about sine? Because we're looking for things that come back, right? So y prime is cosine, y double prime is minus sine, and these are not equal, so not a solution. OK, let's keep thinking here. How about e to the minus t? So y prime is minus e to the minus t, but its second derivative is itself again. So that's also a solution. Okay. All right, what if we multiply this solution by some constant? So let C1 and C2 be elements of the real numbers. Let them be constants. So now look at look at C1 e to the t. This is a solution because when you when you differentiate the constant in front of the e, you just get it back again, right? So so y1 prime is C1 e to the t, and y1 double prime is C1 e to the t, and that satisfies the ODE. Similarly, if we look at this one, the second derivative is minus C2e to the minus t. The second derivative, you get back to the original one. So that's also a solution. Okay. And you'll see this throughout the entire course, this next piece here. It's called um, superposition. If y1 and y2 are solutions, and so is um, y1 plus y2. Okay? And that just takes a little bit of algebra to show, and I'm going to do that. So the sum of two solutions is a solution. Or as we like to say, any linear combination. So solutions. to this ODE are of the form y equals c1e to the t plus c2e to the minus t. And later on, because we have to build this, we got what two or three weeks on at least at least two full weeks on this on this chapter. Um, sometimes more depending on how crazy I go with the stuff on the end. Um, we'll show later that these are the only solutions, and you'll see why eventually. Okay. So, so this is the general solution, and I did it with guessing and checking. But later on, I'll show you that I can find these for specific numbers, or we can. So here's a real sticky part for people. We're going to um, 
we're going to we're going to solve solve the, the IVP here. Okay. And remember what the initial conditions were. I'm going to rewrite them here. Somewhere up here. 2 and minus 1. Okay, so y of 0 is 2. So, so your first equation is 2 equals c1 plus c2 when you plug in 0. Um, but then you have to do y prime. So let me put y prime here. And when you plug that guy in, you get you get this equation, right? So now we have a system of two equations. And two unknowns. And you have to do some algebra work here. This one's really well set up. Just add the two together. You get 1 equals 2c1, which implies c1 equals a half. And then you can plug that into um, you can plug that into either either of these to find C2, and C2 turns out to be 3 halves. Okay. So the final solution turns out to be y equals 1 half e to the t minus 3 halves e to the minus t. And that's the particular solution. So if you don't remember how to solve systems of linear equations, um, brush up on that or ask me to show you how to do it. You can use a matrix, you can use substitution, lots of ways. We'll be doing matrix multiplication in this course a lot, so you might as well learn how to do that if you want. Um, okay, so let's see how I got this, how we got this solution, where, where it all comes from. So since, since P, Q, and R are all constants, we can rewrite our equation as a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero. Okay, and a, b, and c are just constants. Now it's clear that e to the power of something is 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 a good place to look for a solution. So we're gonna we're gonna let we're going to let y be e to the rt, where r is some parameter. Okay. And then we're going to sub, sub this into this equation here. This one right here. Okay. So when I sub it in, I get a r squared e to the r t, so doing the chain rule, plus b r e to the r t, plus c e to the r t equals 0, right? And This is y double prime, this is y prime, and this is y prime. So I've just taken this guy, taken the first and second derivatives, and solved. Okay, so if we divide, divide by e to the rt, which is illegal because it's non-zero, well, let's all just factor first. All right, so I factor the e to the rt out. Now, this is crucial. E to the RT is non-zero for all T and R. So we can divide by it. It's legal. So this says this is true, and this is true if and only if 
well, i equals e to the rt is the solution to the ODE. So, look at this. All of second order differ differential ODEs boil down to the quadratic equation. Okay. And so definition we call AR squared plus BR plus C equals zero the characteristic equation. Okay, the first round of this is to assume that R1 and R2 are real numbers and that they're not equal. Then Y1, which is C1E to the R1T is a solution and y2 equals c2e to the r2t is another solution. Okay. And then the general solution is the sum of these. So solving a first order, uh, sorry, sorry, solving a second order linear ODE with constant coefficients literally boils down to just finding the roots of the quadratic equation, period. Okay, so going back to our original example. Characteristic equation is r squared minus 1 equals 0. So r equals plus or minus 1. Right? And those are the r's. So now the general solution is y equals c1e to the t plus c2e to the minus t. That's it. Okay, here's another one. I have the ODE y double prime plus 5y prime plus 6y equals 0. Okay. The characteristic equation is r squared plus 5r plus 6 equals 0. This factors. Right? Yeah. And so this says r equals minus 3 and minus 2 are the roots of the characteristic equation. And so the solution y equals c1e to the minus 3t plus c2e to the minus 2t. And this is the general solution. So yeah, considerably easier than um, exact equations and Bernoulli's and all that. Okay, so that's a little intro. Um, today is Thursday, and tomorrow is assessment three. It is going to be one uh, application problem. Not quite as in-depth as the one from yesterday, which I thought was like my favorite problem of the semester for sure. I, now I'm obsessed with finding more things about um, epidemics that, that we can bring into the class because it's all about rates. And the more I look at the news, the more I want to find some ODE stuff that's floating around with COVID. So. That's my homework problem. Um, 
to figure that out. Yeah, so tomorrow assessment three, application problem, um, just like the ones we did this week. And then um, homework is due Monday. I'm about to add these problems to it from, from section 3.1. One, two, three, four, nine, ten, thirteen, and fourteen. These go very fast. So two, three, four, six, eight problems here, and then two from the other. So ten total for for Monday. Um, and um, yeah, so from now on, homeworks are going to do. So this is now this is permanent, and not next week because it wouldn't make sense. But the following week, so Tuesday the 8th, I think we're going to start doing assessments on Tuesdays. But um, I'll make up my mind about that next week. Okay, I'll see you in a minute.